Hello everybody, today let's get the dash cowl area finished and the roof completely welded on. Okay, so let's go. So let me get you caught up in case you haven't seen previous episodes. What I thought I was doing was just making some minor repairs and changing out the dashboard, and I found massive amounts of rust, as you can see here in the A-pillars. Upon cutting them open, I found that they were filled with expanding foam, and the previous people that painted the tar 10 or 20 years ago used expanding foam to place Bondo over uh, and Duraglass. Uh, so obviously it's all got to come out. So here I'm cutting out the A-pillars, removing the spot welds, removing the full A-pillar uh, so that I can replace them with new AMD pieces that I purchased from Summit Racing Equipment. Uh, the A-pillars were only 80 bucks a piece. The roof, I thought I was going to be able to patch, but it is a lot worse than it seems. There's a pinhole. Those bubbles there are indicators of much more worse things to come. Apparently, a vinyl top was added onto this car sometime early in its life, and the people that painted the car uh, decided that just bondoing over massive amounts of rust on the roof was good enough. I even find over here a riveted on piece of metal um, and places where it was just completely Swiss cheese. So the roof comes off. Uh, one of the first steps is taking out the leaded factory joint, uh, melting that out with propane. And here comes the roof comes off. Uh, this part here, I really just cut out the roof, leaving about a one inch uh, perimeter all the way around so that once the roof comes off, then you can go and have access to that perimeter and either drill out or grind the spot welds uh, to remove the remaining perimeter, one inch perimeter of the roof uh, that is still welded to the frame of the car. Here you can see the underlying frame of the car is in pretty good shape, other than the fact that there's a piece missing at the front uh, where they cut it out for the sunroof. Uh, new A-pillars get fitted on, fully spot welded, except just here at the front where they get uh, butt welded in. And uh, here is cleaning up the rest of the roof. Uh, that part was drilling out spot welds so that I can remove the remaining portion of the roof in the front. And then cleaning up the underlying metal. Here's removing with an air chisel the strip along the roof gutter. Uh, and that key there is to not destroy the underlying metal. Uh, the piece on the back came off very easily because it was really paper thin from rust. So uh, this rear portion, I just used the uh, air chisel and it came right off very easily without disturbing the metal underneath. And again, I want to sand it down and get it all cleaned up. Uh, the bare metal underneath was in good shape. And this part here is fabricating out of a piece of uh, 20 gauge sheet metal I got from Home Depot, uh, fabricating the rest of that brace that needs to run uh, front to back along the middle of the car, hammering it, uh, you know, using some various different techniques uh, to get it to the proper shape, which gives it strength. And here you can see what it looks like spot welded in and the roof is solid once again, all the structure is back. And here is the top of the quarter panel. This is the right side, the passenger side of the car. Had to cut out some rust around the rear window, uh, put on some zinc weld through primer, welded in a new piece, and it came out pretty nice. This is applying some sound dending material I got from Summit Racing Equipment to the back of the roof panel so it doesn't sound like a tin can. You know, the factory had something different but same uh, function on it as well. And uh, the roof then can actually go on, which is where we left the last episode, is the roof is, was at least placed on, uh, but not welded on yet, so that's what we're picking up. The constant battles I've found that when I'm doing pro car projects like this is, do you buy the tool or not? Especially if it's a tool that you might only use once, but you always wind up using them later, or at least you tell yourself that. But um, one of my uh, more recent favorite places to get stuff especially for the hobbyist where you know, you're not using it every day, um, you know, so the durability isn't as important, uh, is here at Harbor Freight. All right, here we are. Here we go. Air tools. And I think the one I want. There, it should be right there. It's missing. Uh, not bad. Like I said, a little more than I'd like to spend for something that I might not use again, but it takes me about 12 seconds to drill a hole. I think there's gonna have to be about 120 holes in the roof. And then you gotta go back and deburr all of them. And it's not just the time, really, because I probably wouldn't net ahead in time uh, because I had to drive out here and back. But, um, you know, it's it's a lot easier on your shoulder and stuff, you know, because um, I'm not lubricating the drill bit because I don't want to put oil into the metals. So I think this is gonna be a better way to go. All right, let's give this thing a try. I'm, I did forget to buy a, whenever you buy an air tool, don't forget to buy a new air end. I pulled one off another tool that I don't use anymore, but uh, watch 
how this thing works. Do you see, this is the flanger and that's the hole puncher. Obviously my hand is way behind it. And I did oil it. Okay. I haven't tried this out yet, but I might want, I think it said it puts the seven thirty seconds, which is just under quarter inch diameter hole. I think it said it puts it a maximum of quarter inch from the edge. Oh, whoa. Where's the piece go? Oh. Oh. Wow. Dang. That is crazy easy. And there's no burr on either side. Wow. Oh. Oh, that's so awesome. Oh, look at this thing. Oh, that's crazy. Oh, I love this thing. Nice. Okay, I uh, apologize about the noise. Neighbors are blowing leaves, but this piece right here, I just cut off. So I'm figuring out, I didn't fully understand the construction, but it's just, I could have left it and painted it with POR and nobody would have noticed the difference, but it would bother me. So, you know, it's a little bit rusty. So there's a couple spot welds. This, I, I, I mean, it's pretty simple now that you look at it, but this is all the drip rail. Now there's actually a gap between this inner structure and, and this, but you see it gets, the, the, the drip rail bridges it. So um, now this, uh, I'm gonna cut out some of this piece here uh, to get rid of that rust, weld it in. Then I'll make a new piece of drip rail and weld that in, or maybe I'll just make a whole new, I'll probably just make a whole new drip rail, you know, just this last four inches or so. Um, I'll show you the progress. All right, I took a, this is actually a piece of a door skin that I had from an 82 cutlass that I scrapped up when it was really rust free. Uh, so this is bigger than it needs to be. And you can see I cut along there, there. And it's hard to see if I cut along there, so now I'm gonna remove that. There might be a couple spot lines in there. Okay, so now I got that piece cut off. And you can see we've got good metal underneath. And I can now, I have to make the bend, I think a little more, it's a little more than 90. Uh, but now I'm gonna fit this. Uh, you know, to, to fit exactly there. And I'll, of course, I'll clean up the metal underneath. So you see now I've got a 90 degree bend in it. And um, I'm not an expert at this. I just think creatively. I'm gonna use this dolly to bend it, I think. Uh, yeah, I think that'll work. Maybe the narrow end would be better. Now this is a little sliver I cut off of the actual drip rail, so I'm using this as my profile. So I've got the one bend in, I need to, at that bottom, that second line there, I need to bend up. I'm not sure how I'm gonna do that yet. All right, I don't know if you can see what I've got here. Just basically using this L angle iron. And it's placing it where I want to bend, and well, let's see if I can do this. This is gonna work. I think I need something different here. Ah. Okay, this, I think this is gonna work. Dag gum. 
That is not bad. Now, actually, it's interesting that I didn't notice about this until I cut it apart. The top edge here is folded over 180. Can you see this? It comes up, and then there's that fold, that 180 fold. So I'm going to try to replicate that. Dear Lord, how am I supposed to do that? Well, I guess we'll start with a 90, huh? From the bottom. I mean, it actually got an edge in there. Holy moly, man, this thing's complicated. About 350, 350 thousands of deep. So I'll mark it up. Got it marked, I've got it clamped. No, this isn't gonna work. And right, I'm gonna try something different here. This is not ideal because it's, you know, you can see the end of the angle is cantilevered off, but I'm gonna give it a shot anyway. I'm try this again. Too shabby. <laughs> That's not bad. These are now in the same focal plane. That's not bad. Don't ever underestimate the usefulness of an extension either. that drip rail edge up just a hair but yeah look at that man that's sweet
Weld line there, just ground it down a little bit. Spot welded. What do you think, that drip rail, huh? Only way you can tell is the height changes about, I don't know, what is that, 60,000ths of an inch or something? And remember, this drip rail gets covered with the chrome trim. I am really pleased with that. Now I just got to go back and uh, repair some of the areas like right here. I'll just back it with copper and weld those holes shut in the drip rail itself. This air nibbler is awesome. Glad I bought it. It uses very little air too. I even turned the compressor off. Oh, it didn't work. 18 gauge steel. Yeah, I need more air pressure. Spoke too soon. Ah, I'm using the wrong stupid side. That's why.
So what I noticed is this drip rail goes all the way to the front of the roof and it really should not. So I cut a little slice in it there. And I believe what you're gonna have to do is hammer and dolly that down. Now I know from the video you can't necessarily tell here that anything's going wrong, but on the A-pillar, the inside of the A-pillar, you're actually welding almost upside down. The surface is kind of angled down. I think what I figured out is the weld through primer is a little bit resistant to weld. And when you have a very small hole, and then on the back side of it, you have weld through primer. I think what happens is you strike an arc and you don't get really good penetration. And then you're kind of starting to fill the hole with poor penetration. So a larger hole, like uh, opening up the holes to quarter inch, uh, you know, from that little air nibbler puncher helps. And I think also scrubbing the metal with a good wire brush to remove the, uh, uh, the weld through primer just in the hole. So if I scrub over a, a, uh, the hole, the plug weld, where I'm going to plug weld, I'm only removing the weld through primer from um, the hole itself and I think another thing that I learned is that black coating is a little bit resistant to welding as well so I think it also helps to get rid of that where you're welding hey guys just got something in the mail here and uh, this is a website that um, I'd never heard of before to be honest um, I actually heard about this website through Brian Trick. Uh, Brian is the guy that uh, we redid uh, my 12 volt axle that uh, you can see, well, you can kind of see it poking out right there. Um, but anyway, um, uh, what I've learned in this business is that oftentimes you learn by doing. I've learned more through posting YouTube videos um, than, you know, I can even tell you. And, um, you know, so unfortunately sometimes these things come after the fact. So in other words, I already made a channel like this, if you remember, okay? Then Brian's like, oh, there's a guy that does that. I'm like, really? Couldn't find it when I was searching, you know? And this website is awesome. Um, they don't pay me to, to say this. I purchased these parts with my own money. Um, it is rustreplace.com. Sorry about the dogs, rustreplace.com. And what this is, wow, look at this. This is the rear window channel, and it's already punched out, as you can see, for spot welds. You see it's got some shape to it. Maybe that's a better way to show it. So it's got some curve this way. It's obviously curved this way as well. Let's go see how it fits on the back of the window. So here's this piece and it goes right there. Isn't that awesome? It's hard to tell exactly. There's a stud in the way. Um, there's a stud in the way there. There's a stud in the way there that's going to have to be cut away. But I think it's going to fit really well. I'm trying to look at how flat it's going to lay. I think, I think uh, I'm free to just go ahead and uh, I'm going to cut under that lip there because I think this is gonna drop down a little bit more, you know, because once this metal is cut away, it's gonna go down about another 30 thousandths of an inch, or 50, 30 to 50 thousandths. But I think the way this is made, this lip is taller than you need it to be. So I think if I cut to, you know, right there, all the way across, I think I'm in good shape. Um, I think I'm gonna go ahead and do it, cut it, cut it all the way, replace it. Um, yeah, I think it's going to be good. Here's another thing that I need to do. I need to get this surfaced. Obviously, this needs to go down to there, but I can't just hammer it down because it's, this is going to be hard to show. Yeah, this angle actually shows it well. So you see this surface here? If I have something maybe like, a, well, if I can use this. I need something not dead straight, but something with a little bit of an arc in it. Um, so see if this curve continued on. Right? Do you see there's obviously a gap there? So we need to get this whole surface down a little bit. I can't just hammer that edge down to get it to go flat. 
So I think I'm gonna have to have somewhere for the metal to go. And I'm gonna tell you, you can't say, oh, the panel doesn't fit. No, 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 no. This is, there's so much variance in this stuff. I really believe that this, you know, is the way it has to be done. I've watched other videos and other YouTube channels of professional shops, and, and, and I was watching in the front uh, of one of them, they had to make a relief cut. Um, in their case, I think they need the metal to stretch. My, mine, I needed to shrink. I'm not a good enough, good enough of a metal shrinker to try and shrink all this without a relief cut. So I'm gonna make a relief cut here and I think that's gonna let this metal move. Um, I really think that's what needs to be done here. Want to fill you in not ideal that cut was probably too wide but so you had to get this part down it's not horrible it's going to need filler on it obviously um and i'll work on it but i think that's what it took to get this shape in general to come down and and see now we've got a much better where's that uh piece of metal much closer contour see right do you see there's obviously a gap there now that's something that I can fill, you know, with reasonable amount of filler. Let me show you what I've got going on here. So see this gap, I'm closing that gap up as I weld along, hammering down, because these clamps aren't big enough to reach in the middle. So as I hammer, that fixes the metal here. The metal is kind of fixed over here. So now as I'm hammering, it, I can see this curve coming down. So I don't want to hammer this curve and ruin it. Um, but if I hammer here, it brings the whole thing down. I think it's working. and show you this curve. I think it came out really nice. Now granted, you can see like a little dimple low spot there, but that's has to be filled anyway. I'm not gonna put uh, the whole, I'm not gonna fill the whole thing with filler, but what I want you to look at is the angle of this relative to that. That curve looks like one continuous curve to me. I really like the shape of that.
Still need to grind obviously down in here, but maybe get like a Dremel or something or take the trunk lid off. I cannot tell you how ecstatic I am right now that I finally, I got a roof back on this car. It's been excruciating, but this is truly gratifying. Try and get you to look all the way around. Finally have this car going back together and not tearing apart and finding more wrong and tearing apart, finding more wrong. Welding is far from professional, but I believe it's solid. That was hard getting down in there. I believe what I'm gonna do is I think I'm gonna uh, probably weld in another piece of sheet metal to try and take up some of that void before I fill it. But there we go. My car officially has a roof again. All right. So here's where I'm at. I've got uh, these filled in more. Uh, it's not the beautiful, most beautiful thing in the world. It looks kind of like a brain, but it's still low. But I just filled that in with a weld so that we didn't have a huge gap there. I was going to weld in a strip of metal, um, but one of the, the guys that I know, uh, Ken, uh, Ken Stifler, who does some really high-end stuff, um, he suggested not to. I think he's thinking because you don't want two layers of metal with something trapped in between. This one, I think, to me, looks pretty good. So from here to here, there'll be a little bit of filler, but I don't know if you can tell, but it's low, not high. Uh, what I'm working on right now is these patch panels I made eons ago. Wait, eons is a few weeks ago. Um, and you can see I sprayed the back side of the panel uh, and the channel here on the car with weld through primer. So now those need to be spotted in, or I should say butt welded in, and then spot welded along the bottom edge. Got uh, except for this section here. You gotta grind the welds down, of course, but that's what it looks like uh, after the welds are ground down. We're getting there. So here is the driver's side B pillar, and I think the shape, the contour is good. And I'm gonna put a layer of uh, it's called Bondo glass. That's, you know, more of a harder, but waterproof filler. I'm gonna put this down as a base layer because I think it's a lot more stable. And you can see the consistency there. It's pretty thick. And like I said, it is uh, actually a waterproof filler. So here's what I'm working on right now. 
Uh, this is the top of the quarter panel here. This part I have not touched. I did weld in this piece um, up to right about there. We saw that already, but I don't like the way this looks. I took the Dremel with a little tiny tip on it, um, this tip on it here, and I was grinding through some of the rust pits and I found a little rust hole there. Um, I just don't like, that's a big dent. They welded a hole and we've got corrosion. So I'm just gonna replace that whole thing. This looks like a very simple piece. It's not quite as simple as you think. It's actually, you see the gap there? So it's got some arc to it. It's, I don't know if you can see that, right? Um, and, uh, but I just, you know, bent a lip down and I'm going to cut that piece out and weld this in. Part of that was out of frame. I'm so sorry, guys. Um, but I should have probably shouldn't have welded it all at once. I don't think it's any more warped than it was, you know, because of these dimples. This edge here still feels straight right along there. I'm not gonna sand it down. See if we can catch the light. It's not bad, huh? You can see a little bit of the weld there, but I'm feeling it. A little bit of a high spot there. I think we're good. Remember how it was like a big, you know, weld and uh, bashed in, you know, low spot there. So um, I think this is far better than it was. There's the inside. I can't get there. I need to do a little more grinding with the Dremel. I can't get the big tool in there. I think we're in good shape. Maybe a little bit more there too. Contour. It's got some. See, it's got some arc in it. It's got the lip. That lip isn't straight either. I don't know if you can tell, but that lip's got a little bit of a curve to it. But I think that's gonna be good enough for government work. I think a magnetic triangle will be enough to hold it in shape, in place, I should say, while I get it tacked in. I'm not yet worried about this. I'm gonna. I'm gonna get it even up here and here and on this edge and then I'm going to pound it down and pound it in place yeah, that's exactly what I'm going to do yeah so let me show you how this uh the dashboard cowl area windshield whatever you call this windshield channel came out I'm honestly not happy with it um I wish you could you know get a better idea it's I feel across here it's very lumpy um, I'm going to fill it with uh, that, that waterproof filler. I mean, I wish, I don't know, I think because of the pounding and welding and pounding and welding, I warped it. 
Um, I was probably too aggressive with that, but it is the front of the dashboard. Um, it is, I mean, this area is hidden by the windshield itself, right? And it is going to be like a matte black, so I guess it's okay. Like I said, I'm not happy with it, but I'll tolerate it. Get all that in. So there's seam sealer through here from the factory, which I have to put in as well, but I think I'm going to do that after the filler. Here's uh, the passenger side. But man, this has come a long way from where she was, didn't it? But this is solid now. It's all steel. So here's how the dashboard windshield uh, cowl area came out. It's not perfect. You can see a little bit of trash in the paint there. And by the way, this is semi-gloss paint that's still wet, right? Um, and it's drying pretty slowly because it's about 50 degrees in the garage, even after cranking the heater up. Pretty cold winter day. Here's the other side. And I'm trying to capture, you know, the fluorescent light so you can see all the flaws. Uh, there's a couple lines right there. I may have to put a little bit of, I may have to put a little bit of a spots I missed um glazing putty and uh you know maybe hit it with another coat but not bad i'll show you a picture here um after it dries as well but first let me pan around to the uh let you get a view of the roof and uh the b pillar area here but it's coming together all right it's been about 20 minutes or something let me touch the part on the that's pretty glossy uh <laughs> i may have to block sand that down i think this is a good place to end the video anyway but uh i may have to block sand this down and go over it with something a little flatter that's pretty daggum glossy what did i use where's the paint i lost the paint uh what the crap oh there it is this is what i used and it's supposed to be semi-gloss but huh. oh well Thank you guys so much for watching. Really appreciate it. Uh, if you want to follow along, you know, keep checking for videos here. You can hit the subscribe button. Uh, please hit that little thumbs up like button. It helps uh, the, you know, YouTube algorithm see that you do like this content and you'll get more of it. Uh, God bless you guys. Have an amazing day.